everyone this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord we are in Matthew chapter 7 verse 9 Amos chapter 9 verse 3 and Ruth chapter 4 verse 7 let's go ahead and pray and we can get started thank you Father God for your word thank you for being such a wonderful God to us thank you for mercy in Jesus name we pray Amen. All right, you guys, Matthew chapter seven, verse nine, or which one of you, if his sons ask him for bread, will give him a stone. So since we are the sons, we are the children of God. When we receive Christ, we are able to approach our father and ask him for whatever it is that we have need of. And so um, the, the main point of that with these scriptures is to let us know that if God the Father is um, our Father and we desire mercy, then we're going to receive mercy, right? If we give mercy, we're going to receive that mercy. And so um, it says, or which of you, if his sons ask him for bread, will give him a stone? If wrath is to come, and we don't want wrath, and we are a son, we are a child, we can ask God for mercy in that time, right? And so we know that God hasn't set it up that way. He didn't even set it up to where his brides will receive that wrath. And when we're saying brides, we're talking about the wise brides of Christ around the entire world, right? It's one thing for a bride to suffer um, on an individual basis, but it's something totally different for uh, all the brides to suffer along with the world. That's not what God has appointed as our fate. All right. And so we know that we would ask our father to spare us from the trial that is coming upon the earth. And so um, the Lord is not going to turn away from that. He's going to hear that prayer. He's going to answer that prayer. Amen. And so um, Amos chapter nine, verse three, if they hide themselves on Mount, on the top of Mount Carmel, from there, I will search them out and take them. And if they hide from my sight at the bottom of the sea, there I will command the serpent and it shall bite them. All right. And so these are people who are um, against God, right? They are the people who have chosen to not receive the Lord. And now they have to go through tribulation, right? Um, these are the people that are hiding from the presence of God because they don't have a covering, right? They don't have a place of shelter. And so they're running and scurrying, trying to hide from the wrath that is being poured out on the earth. And so it says, if they hide themselves on top of Mount Carmel from there, I will search them out and take them. And so um, we know that um, Mount Carmel was um, notorious for um, two major things that we can know of kind of in the Bible. And that was when Elijah the prophet had the sacrifice there. And also the fact that fugitives ran to Mount Carmel. It was a place where many fugitives hid, right? And so this is um, letting us know that um, even if you get a good hiding spot, right, the power of God is still there. God still sees that. And he's still going to pour his wrath out in the best of hiding places, right? This is the tribulation. No one will be exempt. And so it says, and if they hide from my sight at the bottom of the sea, there I will command the serpent and it shall bite them. So no one will be exempt, not the richest of the rich, um, not the poorest of the poor. It does not matter. God is going to make sure that they experience, everyone experiences that uh, great wrath that's being poured out. And so um, the third verse that the Lord gave me was Ruth chapter four, verse seven. Now this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging to confirm a transaction. The one drew off his sandal and gave it to the other. And this was the manner of attesting in Israel. So this great exchange is going to occur. And in the exchange, there is protection, right? We are being covered by 
Christ. Remember, Boaz represents Christ. Ruth represents the wise bride. And so um, God is just letting us know during that time, the bride is separate. Hallelujah. She is being protected. She is being um, redeemed. And this transaction occurs through the exchange of the sandal. And so this is not a wrath that is going to be poured out on the bride. This is going to be for those who are against God, as well as those who have received God too late. Right? It is never too late to receive God, um, receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. But as far as too late in that the refinement process has occurred, the test, the testing, this new form of testing is about to occur. And that's in the vehicle of tribulation. And so they're going to have to go through those things. Yes, they can be saved. Yes, he will have mercy on their sins, but the wrath is still being poured out because they have not received that love initially of Christ having done all the suffering for them. So now they're going to have to go through that suffering um, in order to cleanse their garments. Amen. All right. And remember, the cleansing of the garments is symbolic of an internal cleansing, not an external cleansing. This is the things that go into a man. Um, the things that are inside of a man are what defile him, not the things on the outside. We know that it is um, God who is cleansing them through his word. He's forgiving them of their sins. They are seeking his face, right? And, and that's something that they're going to do. Many of them are going to do until the end, until they die. And so many will be uh, sacrificed. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for your cleansing of us internally now. Thank you that we know that it comes from you. Forgive us for all of our sins. Help us to walk uprightly before you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to, um, who would like to rededicate their heart to the Lord, um, maybe you have fallen away or somehow allow something else to be leading you and guiding you rather than Christ himself, um, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, you see me, you know what I'm going through. You know how I have fallen away from you. Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me, Jesus. Heal me, Jesus. Help my way to be back with your way, Lord God. Help me to be on that straight and narrow path that leads to your heavenly kingdom. God, Help me to not fall off of it to the right or to the left. Help me to learn to listen to your Holy Spirit and be led and guided into all truth. I say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you pray those prayers and you believe those prayers and the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption and no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth and he's going to do just that. Amen. Also, one of the um, things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. 
All right, you guys, take care and be blessed. Also, don't forget to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, take care and be blessed.